Welcome to Squirrel, the podcast for distracted writers, hosted by Candace J. Thomas and Jody L. Milner. All right, everyone, it's Candace here. Hi, it's Jody. And we have entered episode 27. It's all about hair, hair on your characters. I finally, we, I've been wanting to do this episode forever. Um, because this is very, uh, it's an interesting topic to me because I, I've run into a problem and my problem is I have written a series that, uh, I am shooting off a, a standalone novel of one of the characters. Now this character that I, er, it's brown eyes, she always was meant to have, be like, uh, like black or ethnic and had the braids in her hair and everything. And now I have to focus on her as my main character. So I, uh, I didn't know exactly how to do that hair, honestly. So I had to research a whole bunch on, on how hair is. And there's just so many different textures to it. There's a lot of life to it and, and things that I don't know because of my, blonde Anglo-Saxon roots. I have this stupid, sleek, blonde hair. The world's most <laughs> boring hair. Not, it really is. That doesn't do anything. It doesn't curl. It doesn't dye. It doesn't do anything. But it doesn't go gray. That's all. That's kind of lovely. But uh, yeah, I, I, so I wanted to get, both Jody and I have very different textures and very different uh, experiences oh, man. with hair. And I think that hair does tell a lot about your character. And it's one of the first things that you throw in to your character building or into your story when you identify a character with a specific hair color or a specific um, trait with their hair. It says something about the character specifically. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about is this (laughs) – these – Different flavors and expectations and, uh, you know, whatever about with our characters and with our own experiences. So there you go. So um, let's talk about our personal <laughs> experiences with hair. Jody, tell me about your oh, hair no. right now. All right. Okay. So uh, I have long, curly, red hair. I have not always had long, curly, red hair. Uh, I actually started growing it out in 2020. Um when I, I had really, really long hair before I had kids, it was down to the middle of my back. And uh, then I had kids, and with each kid, it got progressively shorter until it got to my chin. Mm-hmm. Um, because, because they pull. They pull at it, and you have to style it, and it's a pain. And, like, I just, I I was so over fighting with more than one thing at a time. And my hair was the last thing on the list, and so I cut it uh, fairly short. And you've always been redhead, though. I've always been a redhead. But when I was a kid, my hair was fairly, like, if, if you're going to look at the the curl chart, like, when I was a kid, there's a I was... a curl chart? There's a curl chart. <laughs> uh, I was more of a 2A, which is just very loose waves. Okay. Um, Are you going to explain this? I part? will explain the, the curl chart, but... You uh, can do that later, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so... Like it was, it wouldn't really do much. And I'm like, I would like it curlier because Annie came out when I was a kid, I guess. And she had curly oh, red hair. Yes. And so they're like, it'd be so cute if he had curly hair. And I got perms and I got perms. And then I hit puberty and the perm never grew out. <laughs> Your hair just went And it just curly. stayed curly. And I'm just like, okay, this is my life now. Um, and so, yeah, it was really weird. And so like, um, like when I was a kid, I'd pretend I was Ariel. Why not? Oh, that's lovely. But I didn't. Have, hers is very straight, and mine is very not. It's got waves. It's, it's you know, it's in the water. When it's in the so water, it's kind it, of like all it plasters to my head, just like everybody else's. <laughs> um, but I do the thing where like she flips it over her head, and she makes that huge arc of hair, and like it's sparkling mm-hmm. in the sunlight. And I try to do that in the pool, and I drown myself. Did you like, would, wrench her would, neck? Like, <laughs> it would like flip into my face and like plaster to my face, and I couldn't breathe. And <laughs> um, and yeah, it's. Yeah, um, but I do remember doing that a whole bunch of times. That's um, awesome. Playing in the pool like I was Ariel. Um, <laughs> I got to be Ariel in a junior high choir, um, Little Mermaid medley. I had to sit in a dinghy with 
um, a dude and pretend we were going to kiss and then have uh, <laughs> the two naughty crabs knock us over. Um, <laughs> and I leaned forward and he leaned back. <laughs> well, how old were so, you? Ten? Uh, junior high. Oh, junior high? You were 14? I was old yeah. enough to, for, yeah, he should, yeah. That's, yeah. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> That's perfect. I know no. who it is, though. That's, <laughs> I still I remember to them. this day, 30 years later. Oh my god! The fellow who leaned back. That's awesome. My, I mean, my hair is very straight. It's just straight. It, even when I tried to perm it, perms don't stay. Uh, I yours did, is baby fine too. It is baby fine. Like each strand is super super thin. Yeah, it's silky. <laughs> oh, the poor silky hair. <laughs> but it's yeah, it is. It's baby fine. It breaks easily, and uh, it. Uh, like yeah, if we ever put since I had one kids, strand it's of mine out. and one strand of yours next to each other, mine's like five of yours. Like Probably it's, each strand. We'll is... have to do that after this. Here, have some hair. <laughs> I just want to see it. I just want to see your hair. Um, yeah, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't dye. It doesn't curl. It doesn't. It's just there. There it is. But the thing about being a blonde, um, I have been. I mean, not that we want to talk about stereotypes, but that I have been stereotyped my entire life. So I. Uh, and I, uh, it's been hard for me to fight that hill that uh, has already been in you know, these these mounds of. I guarantee you, you've I mean, never been called a redheaded stepchild. Um, no, no, but I have been called a dumb blonde. So we each have our hills to die on. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, yeah, very good. So anyway, uh, that was I was with my with my blonde straight hair. Uh, it was very. I've I've been called straw a lot. The my hair is like like horses would nibble on it. it. Made me terrified of horses when I was younger. So I yeah I I had a lot of insecurities. My my long hair. I have I've had short hair before, but I don't like it. I don't like. Well, as you said, it takes lots of maintenance to have short hair. It takes a commitment, and I don't. Uh, I can't do that. But I, uh, long hair is a security blanket. And I think it is a lot for a lot of people, actually. I'll keep it like if I grow it longer than what I have now, then I get more attached to that longness. So I try to keep it relatively like right at bra st- strap length so that I don't get too attached. I can cut it a little bit shorter. And, you don't get your hair and, stuck in the chair. I don't. Yes. You've done that. I've had, yeah. I've gotten it <laughs> stuck in the seatbelt where, you know, you know, it gets pulled into the mechanism. Like my hair will get pulled into the mechanism with Can't it. Can't say that I've ever had because that. Because it sticks out sideways <laughs> and it will <laughs> get stuck in the seatbelt mechanism if I'm not careful. I am very staticky on a ta- trampoline. I imagine. Sh- extremely staticky. So <laughs> watch out. Don't jump on a trampoline with me because Zzzt. I will zap you every single time. So. There was one time, sorry to go off topic. We are really squirreling this. Uh, I worked at for the air at the airmail field for the post office, emptying bags from a that would come down nylon bags that would come down on a slide, a steel slide, and I'd have to empty these into a gurney. And if I didn't touch the metal gurney to uh, <laughs> alleviate the static shock that I'd get from my hair. It would. I would see the bolt of of lightning that would Sparks. come. To, yes, of, of the zap that I would get if I didn't touch the gurney every single time. That was the worst job ever. That does not sound fun. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh, my hair was a lot thicker then and a lot longer. Honestly, so bad choice there. Anyway, that's a big squirrel moment. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, okay, I want to hear more about the textures, um, different textures and different cuts. And okay, whatever. so not all curly girls know that there is actually defined designations for what your curl pattern is. But a lot of us do because it that will determine what kind of care your hair needs. And so, um, like, if you're in the ones, your hair is straight. You are a one. Okay. There is no A, B, and C in one. I believe it's just one. Your hair is straight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, twos straight. are wavy. 
Okay. Uh, like A is a very loose wave. B is more and C is more, but not spiraling yet. So if okay. so, those are A, B, and C of the wavy hairs. And threes are definitely curly. So I would say I'm a 3A because I have a large, loose curl. B is tighter. Like ringlets. Like ringlets. Okay. And B is a tighter ringlet. Um, and C is almost like a pencil thin ringlet. Um, and so those are like... That's the the threes, and then the fours are when we're getting into coily, coily hair. Okay. Um, there's curls and there's coils. So if you think more uh, springs um, where it's very, very dense, it's very, very tight, and this is when we're going into the more ethnic hair where um, there is just so much texture and, again, a whole different level of care required to maintain it. Mm-hmm. And, and so buy, that is, that is I, the curl chart in yeah, I I bought a book about how to write black hair and how to understand it because and it does show these different curls mm-hmm. and I guess it it does go through a chart. So yeah, you've probably seen the chart. I probably have seen the chart. So that's interesting. <laughs> Our paths have crossed. Yeah, maybe. How do you how do you tame that? How do you a what do you do with it? Of product, really An amazing amount of product. So, um, I don't think I have any product. I haven't had product in my hair for a really long time. I guess that might be one of my problems. Why it's so straight and it doesn't do anything because I don't do that. But anyway, tell me about your so, product. um, curly hair needs a lot of moistures, like a lot of conditioning, a lot of moisture. A, like dryness is the enemy for curly hair, and so, like with your. Yours, moisture and oils are the enemy. Yeah. Because it shows up so easily. Yeah. I have to wash my hair uh, every day. And if I wash mine every day, I would look like a troll doll. <laughs> it would go, it would, it would just, it strips the oils off and we need those to help maintain the definition. And so um, I used to do, like I'd get out and I'd put in a, I'd get out of the shower, I would put in a leave-in conditioner um, that is in a jar. Like you scoop that with your fingers Um, and I put that on first and then I would put a a three different products I would use. So I just barely changed it to a different product right now. I'm trying I'm trying the LUS system, which has been aggressively marketed to me on Facebook. I don't even know anything about that. Yeah. But, so I get I get curly hair marketed too because I searched it on Google once, people just <laughs> once. It's okay. Uh, they know I love sweaters, so. <laughs> I get targeted for sweaters. Um, so, yeah, I'll use a leave-in. I'll use gel. I'll use a mousse. Uh, I have oil that I'll use uh, to to help bring down the frizz at times. Right now, the thing I'm using is supposed to be a three-in-one. Um, and you're supposed to be able to do a little bit more. You're supposed to train your curls, by the way. There's training your curls where you, really? you okay. isolate strands and you, you brush them so all the, the hairs are aligned and then you kind of work it into a nice curl and let it dry like that. And it helps train the strands that that's what it's supposed to be. Um, and there's a whole section in my back that is has no idea how to curl anymore. <laughs> and I... I'm trying to work with it, but I have no patience. And so, like, I will find one or two areas that look particularly bad, and I'll be like, let's fix a piece of you today. Um, If I was more consistent, it would be better. Um, Do you brush it? I can only brush it when it's sopping wet. I cannot brush it when it's dry. I can brush it when it's dry. I just don't like it because it it gets really, really poofy. Okay. And, And that is, like... It becomes water resistant at a point where you it's you can't even get it wet again. It's like it gets really hard to get wet again. So you don't do well in like moisture climate. Humidity makes us frizz pretty good. Although the being in humidity also helps because we retain more moisture. Like here in a desert, it's actually harder because we frizz more. Okay. Um, but with high humidity, you also can frizz as well for a different reason. It's it's complicated. Did you know <laughs> that curly girls have rules? Um, no. <laughs> so, and I see this a lot and it drives me crazy. And in um, Discover Witches, she's supposed to have kind of wild, poofy, um, uncontrolled hair. It's not necessarily curly, but it's got a lot of texture to it. And one of the things that pulled me right out of the book is that as a witch, you don't want other people to get your fingernails or your hair because if they have your DNA sample, 
they can use that to manipulate you. I don't know. I'm like, okay, I shed everywhere. <laughs> I if I travel with you, you will be finding my hair in your stuff. I have for actually. weeks. <laughs> um, yeah, my like, husband's like, where's this? I don't. I don't know long, anyone with this long red hair. curly red hair. Uh, I and there's there's not a lot we can do about it. We just shed everywhere. Um, See, and I wouldn't have even found that as a problem. So that's interesting that you found that. Yeah, and like my poor vacuum, the roller is matted with red hair. Um, it's a thing. So there are a couple rules, um, but not all curly hair is created equal. So, but for most curly girls, do not touch a girly curly girl's hair. Never touch a curly girl's hair unless she gives you permission. Like, don't touch their hair. And now, a word from our sponsor. This episode was sponsored by the Farmhouse Recording Studio. The Farmhouse Recording Studio is located in Bluffdale, Utah. It was designed and built for podcasts, audiobooks, radio ads, and so much more. Visit us at farmhouserecording.com. That's all one word farmhouserecording.com or visit our Instagram at the farmhouse recording studio all one word now back to the show um so don't touch a curly girl's hair um we don't like it because it makes us frizz like we can't even touch our own hair once we style it usually we try not to touch it at all really um okay. because the more you touch it the angry it gets the bigger it gets the more frizzy it gets and like if you wanted to find curl you don't want to touch it at all now some people have figured out a way of getting around that and that's either a lot of gel or a lot of training um, but if with a lot of gel you don't want to touch it because it'll break it like it causes a cast on the hair and it's crunchy um okay so does it uh, does it tangle really like easily you would think it would tangle a lot and depending on what i'm doing because at night i need to bundle it on the top of my head but by moving it up and down like that, the back gets really tangled for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'd think it would be a lot worse. I think wavy hair gets more tangled than a curly, curly hair. Because yeah. ours kind of just lock in place. My ha- my hair tangles really quickly uh, because, I mean, maybe because it's so so fine and straight. And, and finer like hair does tangle a lot more too. Yeah, I hate it. It does, like, that's If I jump on a trampoline again, I have to braid my hair. Yeah. Um, well, and I have to tie mine up. Uh, like when I sleep, I have to put it in a like either up in a pineapple where I have it in a little silk scrunchie. I've seen on the, top the of my pineapple, head. everyone. It's impressive. Um, or I have little bonnets that I'll do as well, and the bonnets feel better on the hair itself. It's better, like it doesn't tangle as much. But if I'm thrashing around, like when I can't sleep and I'm turning around a bunch, like I cannot keep that thing on my head. How did you discover that? A bonnet? Yeah. Is that just always been a thing in your... I don't sleep with a bonnet. So this was something that um, Caucasian curly girls are borrowing from ethnic curly girls. Okay. Because they've been using bonnets for centuries. Gotcha. And we're just barely catching on to this being an amazing idea. <laughs> and so while well, people are like, you you need to let them have... I'm like, this is maintaining hair and it is a product that works. And so, yes, I have, um, I have two, I have little sleeping caps and I had a bonnet, but I didn't like the way the headband worked. So it's on my, the back of my headrest in my car. So I don't frizz my hair on my headrest. Oh my goodness. And I have a silky pillowcase. (laughs) Not because I'm precious, but because it keeps the hair from frizzing. Oh, that's cool. I, I just like the silky pillowcases. It feels nice too. I mean, (laughs) but it keeps, it helps not break that hair pattern. Very good. The, uh, let's. I want to go into talking about character because uh, I, your hair. First of all, you always have to write hair for your characters, but it also says a lot about your characters. So, uh, tell me first about redheads. What does that say about characters? I have written redheads in my in my stories. I have main characters that are redheads. Not may, not specifically are they curly like yours, but what does that what does what do you think that says about characters? So the stereotype I see the most coming up when you have a redhead is that either like if you think the Weasleys, they're weirdos, they're outcasts, they're different, they're not quite accepted, 
um, and they gave him red hair. Uh, but there's also the other side of the coin where it's Jessica Rabbit, where we're adventurous and bold and sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there's not anything really in the middle. Um, like Merida, she's one of the only, she's the only Disney princess with curly red hair. And thank heavens she's there. Well, her hair's amazing, though, in that like when I saw it and it has its own life mm. the through the entire movie I'm fascinated with what her hair is doing because it's wild and it does like these strands that fall into her face and they just kind of move and I know I'm jealous <laughs> that her, her her hair maintains definition in a medieval Scotland because um, <laughs> product people she wouldn't have had any uh I don't know how. uh, I've never been to Scotland. Maybe it's very. uh, There's a lot of humidity there. Mayo, just a lot of. You. What are you talking about? We used to. We used to put mayo on our hair. Mayo um, as conditioner. It's really hard to wash out, so don't do it. Oh my gosh. So yeah, it's it's crazy. So like we are, you know, either we're the awkward, a kind of weird character, or we're supposed to be a a bold, sexy symbol. And and for redheads, there's really not someone in between. Well, there is. I mean, well, when I wrote a redhead as my character, she was bookish and smart. And uh, so that's, I, I wanted her to be a redhead for that, you know, for that reason. Then maybe, maybe that, I mean, that's so how you, I viewed it. You broke the stereotype and the redheads of the world. Thank you. I, I guess so. We don't like being either the awkward ones or the weirdly sexy ones. Oh, Okay. I'll remember that. So um, no, she was, I appreciate that. I mean, my character was a little awkward. She didn't feel it. She fit in, but she but she gravitated to books and to writing and and her librarian ishness. So that's where I that's where I put a redhead. So, so how about blonde stereotyping? Oh I mean, gosh. we kind of brought up dumb blonde. Unfortunately, Everything. that keeps coming up. Well, and the thing about being a blonde is you're already adding a ethnicity to it so a lot of the books that you will read uh like romances and stuff kind of stay away from blondes there's a lot like they'll put brunette or maybe like a a a dirty blonde might might show up but it's like brunettes you can put any a lot of ethnicity to it um or black hair Uh, red hairs probably are also put as a (laughs) A, a white person because I don't know. If oh any, yeah, we're you're all pre- like pasty. predominantly uh, Scottish Isles. Yeah, um, very very pale. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do not tan. We freckle. Yeah. Um, so so I mean there is, it does. There is an expectation when you have a blonde that yeah she's the cheerleader or she's dumb or whatever. Uh, it it, it uh, yeah it's kind of a it's it's a hill to climb when you have a blonde character. So, uh, brunettes are safe. That's brunettes what I, are safe. Yeah. You can be brainy, mousy, uh, whatever. And you can put different, you can put any kind of, uh, I don't know, ethnicity pretty much to that. Like, uh, you can go like Africa or South America or uh, to, they can do brunettes to the black hair. So, anyway... Uh, yeah, that's blonde. So what do you think to say. unusual color choices say about characters? Oh, I love it. I love it. So you were talking, uh, this is a couple episodes ago, or maybe, maybe, yeah, it's been a couple episodes, where you mentioned that you were reading The Daughter of Smoke and Bone, or you wanted to. It's on the list. It's on the list. Darn it. Yeah, she's got different color hair. And there is, there's a reason for it. But I love the, the fact that her, she's got blue hair. You know, um, I think that adding different colors says there's an alternative to your character. You know, there might be a rebellious nature to it if they are purposefully dyeing it different colors or if it's, you know, has some kind of weird streak. Uh, Do you know uh, Scott Pilgrim? Okay. Ramona Flowers is constantly... Everyone else who knows Scott Pilgrim will know this, that Ramona changes her hair every 10 days so uh it and it's always a different bright different color and she's not afraid of that that says a lot about her character being you know independent and not you know not fitting toward the you know the normal 
uh, expectations, uh, you know, and it's and it's also kind of attractive. It's definitely attractive to Scott Pilgrim because when she changes her hair, he's like, oh, your hair's blue now. You know, <laughs> it was pink last time I saw you and now it's blue. Um, well, and it's like a look at me. This is a, it's almost a demand for attention to do outlandish hair color. Um, and a lot of it's just personal expression, but a lot of times in writing and in fiction, it will be used as a pay attention to this character. They have something special going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. I, I think that's a really fun idea to play with if you change your hair or do a different color. Like anime is constantly doing this. Oh, absolutely. You know, th- to uh, to say something about their character. You know, when I, uh, in my Viviteer series, everybody, all the, all the sisters have different colors of hair because of the different magic that they have encountered. So uh, that also tried to say something about their character and how, and their strengths. And so, yeah, I'm, yeah, there you go. I don't know. Let's <laughs> just say about that. Do you have any c- characters with different color hair? So again, first time out in writing, Like, I knew hair was important, but I didn't put a lot of thought into what kind of colors I was going to give them because this was set in a typical medieval Europe. And so everyone's going to be various flavors of blonde brown. Um, Blonde and brown. I said that wrong. Um, And so they they all are either chestnut um, or darker brown. The only character that's really distinct is my my villain, who has a sheet of silky black hair. And that was intentional because it's supposed to represent like she is different than they are and she can choose her appearance and she's choosing this very dramatic silky black. Um, And it doesn't hurt that I modeled her off of a rock star um, from a, from Nightwish, I think. It's this. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it wrong. Are they Danish? I think they're Danish. It's a Danish uh, Beauty and the Beast band where um, you have an operatic singer and then like really heavy metal. Okay, I am going to uh, trust you on that. I don't know anything about it. For my Nightwish fans, I modeled her <laughs> on Tarha, uh, Tarha Tarunen. Uh, that's awesome. She actually she looks really cool. She's got this otherworldly look to her. Well, and that's uh. It's important. One of the things that you can't avoid is is different um, ethnicity in your writing. You have to consider all of that. In my region, like, when in my map that I created for Vivitira, I I did like the the dunes had a specific uh, look to them uh, if they lived in the salt dunes, or the northern uh, crest had different look. And the southerns and the butterfly butterfly islands, you know, were a lot darker. You know, I I put on all of those that that not only could readers maybe identify with it, but also to just create uh, a lot of I don't know the I'm trying to fight the word just a lot of just flavor I guess just a different uh, I don't know the word that I'm trying to come up with. I don't you know. created cultural differences because you had a big world. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, uh, the just understanding evolution and how somebody would would change depending on where they lived, you know, because they because they needed a different melanin or because they it was very bright where they are, and so they you know they needed you know slitty more slitty eyes or something, you know that's. Bringing in that's something you can't avoid. You have to bring in that those kind of things. And thinking about hair also brings in those that that quality to their uh, specific region. You know, and I, I respect I respect everyone who has these different kind of issues when it comes to hair. <laughs> and I am learning way like a whole lot about how to write these kind of characters you know uh, specifically with my you know my friends who are black and teaching me how to how they have to do hair and how that how much maintenance it takes I just had no idea how I complain about my hair all the time and I feel dumb for complaining about it because it 
because it dries in, you know, 10 minutes. And, I, <laughs> and here and I am 12 so hours later straight. and it's, and it's still, still wet. <laughs> underneath and it can be days if i put it up in a ponytail and it's been damp underneath oh yeah. my gosh it's crazy final thoughts what do you think so i think when introducing a character like hair is often this first thing that anyone would notice about them and in real life that's true too and so that is your first clue about what your character is going to look like so be really intentional with whatever choice you choose with their hair, because it's going to say a lot about them that your reader is going to assume even before you say anything about them. And so I think we should be intentional with um, choosing something in choosing a hair that aligns with your vision of that character. Um, and also, like you said, their upbringing is it appropriate, like for the region, fictional or real that they're being brought up in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I I just one of the things that I love about writing is actually writing hair. I like adding a lot of diversity into my writing and so I like to spend time in when when their hair is blowing or if it's glistening or whatever how how it's shaped. I like those details and I like reading those details. So when people add those, it just it helps my my vision of the character and it brings more life to the to the character for me when I get when I get to the hair part. So I find it's very important to really think about the details. And now there we are. There we are. Yay, thank you for doing this episode. You finally got to do your hair episode. Well I honestly I needed to know specifics. So I knew that you were you. <laughs> Yes, it was. <laughs> I needed to know how you did specific things. <laughs> so Carefully. without without telling you or asking you, <laughs> tell all right, your your hair is wild and crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me how do you tame that? I didn't want to I didn't want to say anything like that. Right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> all right. Coming up next, uh, we're continuing on our new year episodes uh, and we're going to be talking self-editing this is going to be anyone who did nano over november the nano rimo writing challenge uh chances are you've got something new and shiny that you might be starting to thinking starting to think about editing yeah. and so we'll give some handy things to think about uh yeah. when you go about self-editing your project good it's going to be a great topic yes sir i know all about that one yes, so <laughs> I, I can add a lot to that so very good uh, yeah, I guess this is my episode, so sorry. Uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon and see uh, about our tip jar and check out our website. And I'm going to add, you should definitely uh, read some of our blogs. They're hilarious and a lot of fun. And they have a lot more insight on what we're actually talking about uh, and what gave us these ideas to talk about these things. So you can get a lot of good information from those too. Thanks. All right. It's been a pleasure. Till next time. Till next time. Thank you for listening to the Squirrel Podcast for the Distracted Writer with Candace J. Thomas and Jody L. Milner. This episode was recorded at the Farmhouse Recording Studio. Please like and subscribe to our podcast for updates and new episodes. And find more information at our website, squirrelpodcast.com. Stay distracted, everyone. I'm not talking about bald people. I'm talking about hair. Bad jokes keep getting better. I love that you give the little fingers for me to be quiet. I know. It's, shut up. <laughs> I have to wait for this to be done. <laughs> and I'm not consistent with which fingers I'm using. I'm just like, just or you're don't counting. talk for a minute. <laughs>